So let's move on into the Saints and the Detroit Lions this week. And we'll start off with the biggest news of the week, which is Michael Thomas might be coming back. He practiced in a limited capacity yesterday. Usually, typically speaking, when a player practices on a Wednesday, it's a good indication. However, I still didn't rank Michael Thomas this week. And I might by tomorrow. Like I said, I usually put my rankings in before the Thursday game, and then I'll update them again all the way through uh, Sunday morning when they'll be finalized early Sunday morning for you guys before those games begin. But the reason I didn't rank Michael Thomas early this week is because I just, I don't understand it. I don't believe they need to play him. So Detroit Lions, you can win this game without him, number one. Number two, I, and I know they're one and two right now, and that may be a big reason why they want to make sure they win this game, but you can still beat the Detroit Lions without him. Number two, this is still half the time that it normally takes for a high ankle sprain to be able to heal. Now, he may be feeling better than people expected him to. He may be recovering faster than people expected him to. But if I'm the Saints, I'm playing the long game here with Michael Thomas. I'm a Super Bowl contending team. You're going up to the Detroit Lions. Again, like I said, it's a matchup. I really believe you can win without him. Why not give him one more week? So I still have to be a little bit more convinced that he's definitely going to play this week, which is why I don't have him right. Now, having said all that, if you're a Michael Thomas owner, you're going to be like, well, how much do you trust him if he does play? Here's what I will say. He's not going to be 100% out there. I, there's no doubt about that. But the fact that it's Detroit Lions, the fact that he's been pushing to get back, the fact that it's clear he's missing the offense with Drew Brees, especially throwing the football, because he just doesn't look quite comfortable having to lean on Emmanuel Sanders and Traquan Smith. You're going to have to play him. Will he be top five for me? No. I, he may not even come inside the top 10, but will he be a must play if he is out there against the Detroit Lions? Yeah, one hundred percent are you going to take the risk a little bit that he's going to be a bit of a decoy sure but he could be a decoy in the same sense that mike evans was a decoy in which he still scored a touchdown he was still a red zone target that still could be a thing so you're going to play michael thomas if he plays this week but i'm still not 100 percent convinced that will really be the case but we'll see and we'll keep you up to date on twitter if you have those notifications up so that's the big that's the big storyline there that people want to know right off the bat. As far as the other wide receivers go, and we'll just start off with the rest of the Saints talking about them as Manuel Sanders, Traquan Smith. I know this is a great match against Detroit, and let's pretend for a second Michael Thomas doesn't play. I'm still not playing Emmanuel Sanders or Traquan Smith. I know it's a great matchup, and one of them might do really well, but I don't think you can tell me with any confidence which one it's going to be. Sanders is the one who had four catch for the four yards. He's the one who came in with the touchdown last week. Traquan Smith had a similar stat line, just didn't have the touchdown catch. I don't know how you play either one of those guys. The week before, it looked like it was Traquan Smith, and then last week, it looked like it was a pretty even split between the two. What we don't know is what Jared Cook's status for sure is going to be. He got banged up in that game. We're going we're gonna to have to watch the practice report carefully today and tomorrow to really be able to establish whether or not we think Jared Cook's going to be out there. Now, as far as Jared Cook, his fantasy value goes, I am not going to play him this week because if he is going to be out there, he's going to be way less than 100%, and he's already a touchdown-dependent boomer bust type of tight end anyway. So I think there's other tight ends you can definitely go to. We have Jared Cook ranked as number 19 tight end on the week, so I'm telling you there are better options out there available to you than Jared Cook against the Detroit Lions. I know it's a matchup you want to be able to play him against, But given his health status, given that he wasn't able to do much against the Raiders, even when he was healthy, I am not going to trust Jared Cook in this game. I'm going to take my streaming options elsewhere. But if he's not involved in this game, he's not active in this game, and Michael Thomas isn't active in this game, then Emmanuel Sanders might become, I don't know, a desperate flex play for me, but still just a desperate nonetheless. Well, I have an easier time playing a Trey Quan Smith or an Emmanuel Sanders in a DFS tournament. Yes, that's something I would look at. But in redraft leagues, there's better options out there. There's better options on your waiver wire out there. So I'm not going to look to play Sanders or Trey Quan Smith this week, even if there's no Michael Thomas, even if there's no Jared Cook. The big reason for that is because it's probably it could be a 100% Alvin Kamara game, just like the game against Green Bay was. I don't see why that changes. Latavius Murray could get 15 carries again, and Alvin Kamara could just dominate every other facet of the game. Obviously, he's an RB1. Obviously, you're starting him. 
Drew Brees, what does this do? Okay, so Drew Brees is on the road, and that always seems to be a problem for Drew Brees. However, being that it's Detroit, being that it's in a dome, he does have a history of doing better on the road when he's going to other domes, a la Atlanta, all those years. He does well there. So Brees enters the streaming territory because as long as he can dump the ball off the Alvin Kamara, we saw last week that he can still have a decent fantasy game, which is he did. He had three touchdowns. He had, I think, was about 275 yards in that territory. Didn't have an interception. Played much better. Looked more accurate than he did in week two. But the big thing was he was able to dump off half of his completions to Alvin Kamara coming out of the backfield. That's not going to change whether there's Michael Thomas or Jared Cook or anybody else on the field this week. That's going to be open all game long. Detroit cannot cover nor stop the run when it comes to running back. So I think Drew Brees is going to have a high floor against Detroit in this matchup. And you can play him as QB 15. He can be that streaming option for you. You can plug and play him this week. Because Detroit's the defense that just keeps on giving to all the fantasy owners and will continue to do so all season long. But when we look at Detroit's offense, Kenny Galladay, you got to play him. It's still a tough matchup. He's going to be matched up on Marshawn Lattimore this entire game. So he does come in as somebody who might be more of a low-end wide receiver two, high-end wide receiver three for us this particular week. But you have to play him. You saw last week Stafford's going to go to him in the goal line situation. And it's not like wide receivers haven't been able to be successful against the Saints defense. I still truly believe that they are a very good defense. And I still truly believe that they're going to be playing a lot better as the season goes on. But after watching Alan Lazard go off for 150 yards, basically, and a touchdown on six catches. I don't see why you would be afraid of playing Kenny Galladay this week. That's kind of how you have to look at it moving forward. So it's still, we're still going to take into account that he's going to be shadowed by Marshawn Lattimore. But I don't think you have to be fearful of it based on the way that they have played over the past couple of weeks. They haven't actually stopped anybody, even though their talent suggests that they might. So that's kind of what you have to take in consideration there. That's why Kenny Galladay is still a must play. Just maybe temper expectations a little bit than what you would normally have with him. You're not playing Marvin Jones. I do believe Marvin Jones is going to turn a corner at some point this season, especially with Kenny Galladay back in the lineup. I do believe he's still the guy who's going to be able to get those multiple touchdown games for you at some point this season. But I'm not going, I'm not going to play him against the Saints. We'll put it that way. When they play against... Chicago, when they play against teams that are more on their competitive talent level, that they're definitely going to be able to throw the ball against, especially at home. Those are the games in which I'm going to take shots on Marvin Jones. For instance, Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'll take a shot on him in Thanksgiving because he always goes off in Thanksgiving. But there's going to be games ahead, I think. That's why I think Marvin Jones is still somebody who has to be rostered on your team, but you can't play him this week. And he's still more of a wide receiver for moving forward as of this moment. And you're not going to play him this week. So the running backs. This mess of a backfield. What do you do about it moving forward? I have DeAndre Swift in a couple of redraft leagues. I have a hard time dropping him. And I did in a couple, and in a couple others, I didn't. And the reason basically came off of roster construction. If you need a roster spot, because you need to pick somebody else up for whatever reason, you can drop DeAndre Swift. Now, he's not welcome to flush town for this show, because Detroit is still going to get knocked out of this playoff race sooner rather than later. Once that happens, there's going to be no reason to continue this experiment, continue this onslaught of Adrian Peterson that they've been rolling out there for the beginning of this season. There's going to be every reason in the world to get ahead for next year on DeAndre Swift's development and seeing what you truly have out of him moving forward. So I do believe there's going to be a point in this season, maybe around week eight, week nine, where DeAndre Swift is going to start to take over for that reason. So that's why I'm still good with him being a stash if you have the ability to do so. If you're 3-0, and 2-1, and one, and you don't have a ton of injuries, where you're not getting killed by bye weeks that we weren't expecting popping up, he's still somebody that I think you can stash. But if you have to make a move, you, don't have, you can drop him. But that's why he's not welcome to Flushtown. Now, as far as this week goes, the only running back that I even contemplate playing would be Adrian Peterson. But again, this isn't a good matchup. This isn't a run. This isn't a Saints run defense that you want to go after. But he's the one getting the carries. And they talked about it this week, too, that they are kind of getting closer to the point where they're just going to kind of turn over the carries to Adrian Peterson. 
which means, you know, I told you back in week one, you should have dropped carry on Johnson, but I think we're going to see even less of Johnson from starting from this week, moving forward. That's the way it sounded like to me. DeAndre Swift is going to be involved because he's still going to be the main pass catcher when they get in those situations. And that could be this game. He could be involved in that capacity. I'm not going to play him though. But Adrian Peterson's probably going to get 18 carries in this game minimum. I don't think, I don't think carry on Johnson is going to be that much of a thing. So as far as if you have to play a Detroit running, running back, I guess it would be AP at this moment. It sounds like he's taking the job completely away from carry on Johnson at this point. Matthew Stafford is a streaming quarterback. Saints haven't been that great against quarterbacks this year. And he's a good common quarterback. He's at home. I think he has a nice floor. I still question what the ceiling is going to be in this particular matchup, but he does have a nice floor coming into this game. I think there's a real chance he scores two to three touchdowns, should get over 250 yards. Just going to depend on how many interceptions does he have. And that'll dictate where his floor is going to wind up being. But I think he should have a decent floor for you if you're looking to stream quarterbacks. Although I do, I do think you're going to have better options to be able to get higher ceiling guys. I don't see why Stafford, if you're looking to take a shot at the quarterback position, I don't know. I don't think Stafford would be the top guy on my list. I mean, and I've proven that it wouldn't be. It would be Joe Burrow, hands down. Or it could even be the guy that we're going to talk about in the next matchup, Ryan Fitzpatrick against Seattle. Jamal Adams may not play. If Jamal Adams doesn't play, they have nothing in the secondary. Absolutely nothing. Ryan Fitzpatrick just had a very good game against a much better Buffalo Bills defense than what Seattle has to offer right now. So there's a really good, I think there's a great chance that he throws for 300 yards in this game. I think there's a great chance that he throws for two touchdowns in this game for Ryan Fitzpatrick. He comes in as QB 12 for us. He comes, so he is one of our top streamer guys just below Joe Burrow, who I think could be a QB one this week. I'd rather have a Ryan Fitzpatrick than Matthew Stafford. Just to kind of throw that one out there. He has a much higher ceiling. Love Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker, this is going to be the week that we see remnants from last season. Devontae Parker is going to finish as a wide receiver one. I have him as number six on the week. I don't know how you can't love him. He did still look hindered to me in that last Thursday game. He's not 100%, but he's had now 10 days to heal from that. He did not have a re-aggravation. That was the most important thing. We talked about that before, too. In this matchup, Devontae Parker is going to do great. Going to do great. He's a must-play in your lineups this week. Must-play. I want Preston Williams to get back to where he was. He's still not quite there. You still can't quite play him. And it's, it's kind of a pain that you can't trust him because I think there's a, there is a second pass catcher, and maybe it winds up being Mike Kosicki, but there's a second pass catcher in this Dolphins team that's going to do well this week against Seattle. There is. I wish it could be Preston Williams because I love this guy's talent. I love what he could be moving forward, but he's still not a guy you can roster in fantasy leagues yet. He's still somebody I have my eye on because he has the talent to be able to turn this around once he, you know, he's still work. I think he's still working his way back from his, his ACL. So that would lead me to believe that the second pass catcher on the Dolphins is going to have a good game would be Mike Kosicki. He comes in as tight end 10 for us. He's a reason why I don't think you need Jimmy Graham. He's a reason why you don't need to stream Dalton Schultz. He's a reason why you don't need to stream Drew Sample. Mike Isicki is somebody who he's a little bit over the 50% mark. So he wouldn't make like the quote unquote waiver wire report. He wouldn't be widely available to you guys, but he is somebody who is surprising, who is still surprisingly available in a number of leagues. I think the number is around 35% available. So check your teams, check your leagues. He might be available surprisingly, but he's definitely a must play for me. He's definitely a low end tight end one for me in this matchup. He's not playing as a tight end. I went into this season, I wasn't big on Mike Isicki. He was one of my busts because Chan Gailey doesn't design his offenses around tight end. The one caveat I gave going into the season was that it could change to some degree if they treat Mike Isicki as a wide receiver rather than a tight end. I was like, if they treat him more as a wide receiver, they treat him as a wide receiver for the Chad Gailey system. It was like, then I will have confidence that he will have a better chance to have a decent stat line. I still have questions about why he doesn't get more separation. So I have questions about why he can't be better after the catch. So I have questions about his overall ceiling because of that, but he can be decent, especially as a tight end position. And that's what's happened. He's playing more as a wide receiver than he is a tight end. He's hardly ever asked to block. He's hardly ever lining up on the end of the tackle. He's usually standing up split out wide. And in this matchup, like I said, a game which the Dolphins are going to have to score points. We all know that. Kosicki is a safe bet to be a low end tight end one. And I think he's going to be the second best pass catcher to have on the Miami Dolphins in this game. 